What's going on, guys? I just had a double shot of espresso, so I don't know about you, but I am ready to bring you another episode of Music, Basketball, and Life featuring Miami Heat shooting guard and my friend, Max Struess. I'd say that the biggest takeaway I have from interviewing Max would be the fact that we both share the common goal of wanting to surprise people with our respective talents. So I need you guys to do one thing for me. So once the interview is over, I need you to go to the comments and settle this debate. You'll know what I'm talking about. It's at the tail end of the interview. We need to put a stop to this real quick and I need to know what you guys think. Every time I watch Max play, I am completely surprised by the fact that just two seasons ago, he was coming off of a career ending injury and just getting better, going in and out of the G League to now being able to posterize some of the best players in the NBA. You can't make this up, and I think the craziest part about all of this is the best is yet to come for him. So without a further ado, here's an episode of Music, Basketball, and Life featuring my guy, Max Struess. <laughs> Yo, that actually rhymed. Still got it. Still got it. Hey man, can you do that again? Huh? Can you do that again? Max, welcome to Music, Basketball, and Life, my man. Appreciate you having me on, man. Good to, good to talk to you. Oh, straight up. So I know you have had the busiest offseason. Um, so kind of tell me about, like, what were you doing outside of basketball to kind of quiet your mind? I know the season was kind of back-to-back, -back, as it was with a lot of people. So I'm wondering what you were doing to kind of get your mind off of basketball and how that kind of translated to coming back to the court um, pretty refreshed, yeah. rejuvenated. Yeah, to be honest with you, I haven't, I haven't really gotten away from it at all. Um, you know, playing summer league, it's like, it's a quick turnaround. So the season ended and then it was like, you maybe had like a couple weeks off. So, um, but with that time, I just, I just try to go home uh, to Chicago and, and see my family. Uh, you know, I got two young nephews. Uh, they're three and one. So oh, just really? try to be awesome. with them, uh, try to spend as much time as possible with them while I'm home. So, uh, that's really what I do with my off time. I didn't get to go anywhere or anything like that, but just just be home and be with family. That's what's up, man. I'm sure you spoil them too. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I tried to. That's I great. Tried. So actually, it's funny that you bring it up. So you didn't really have too much downtime besides going to Chicago, spending time with the fam. You come back for summer league, and dude, I was so impressed. I mean, I'm very impressed with you as a player. Obviously, um, I don't know too much about basketball. It's funny. I've been learning over the past year <laughs> everything in terms of technicality. Fun fact. So when I was interviewing Gabe, I yeah. kind of slipped up. I was like, wait, you're, you're a point guard, right? And he's, dude, he was like, yes, yes, I'm a point guard. <laughs> I'm still learning all the intricacies of the game and whatnot. But to see you show out like you did, it was pretty fun. So kind of tell me about that, how, um, you know, the squad in terms of the coaching staff, what were they telling you in terms of just to to kind of show out, play your role, do your thing. Like, what was that all yeah. about? Yeah, um, you know, it was different. Um, it kind of like when the season was over, the regular season here ended, um, it was kind of shifting gears towards summer league and um, kind of had to sit down with all the coaches and it was like more more so like summer league is going to be like your show. You know, like we're going to feature you. It's going to be the, a lot of the – the ball's going to be in your hand a lot. It's going to be you making decisions and you're trying to score a lot for us. So um, definitely a role that – I played in college, but ever since I've gotten the NBA, it's like you don't really get those roles. You know, we got superstars that do that for us. So um, it was kind of a, a nice thing to get back to it. And, uh, you know, it was a, it was a challenge uh, to see if I could still play like that. And um, I'm very happy I played summer league. And, um, and with how it went, I mean, I couldn't have asked for anything more. And I, and I got that vibe from you when I would watch you play and when I saw the highlights. I was like, oh, this man is taking advantage of this opportunity. <laughs> And uh, it's, it's awesome to see, you know, when, when you and Gabe, when you guys are given these tasks, you guys rise to the occasion. 
um, that kind of just shows how much alliance you guys are, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Me and Gabe piggyback off each other. Uh, that's my guy. So, uh, you know, we were right right next to each other in the locker room last year, and uh, you know, we were both on that two way contract. So, uh, everything we go through, we kind of do it together and and talk to each other through it all. So, uh, I couldn't be more happy to have a guy like Gabe in my corner and, and, and a teammate like Gabe. He's one of the best I've ever had for sure. That's incredible. And it's, it's also so rewarding. I mean, congratulations for signing that deal. Uh, yeah. Thank I, you. Both, I, both of you guys kind of got deals at the same time too. So that's yeah. big congratulations to you, man. You deserve yeah. that. I appreciate that, man. So let's talk about some music right now. So top off the yeah. top, man, this is a segment I've kind of started with all of these episodes um, where I kind of ask, you know, what are your top three favorite songs at the moment? And kind of who are your top three favorite artists in general? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm honestly, on a, I'm on a big kick right now. I just, um, one of my best friends back home and my cousin, they, they put me on a new guy, uh, Noah Kahan. Noah if you've Kahan. Heard. What, what kind of yeah. music does he make, man? Um, he's a singer, but it's like, it's more, you've heard of like uh, Quinn 92, Quinn XCII, have you heard of him? Dude, you got to put me on. See, this you is, haven't heard of him? Oh this is man, why I love this series, man, because yeah. I'm put on to new music all the time. A group called Surfaces. I don't know if you heard of them either, but I have uh, heard of Surfaces. I think I've yeah. heard one or two records by them, but I got to delve yeah. into more. Yeah, those are like the three main ones. I'm like, I've been listening to a lot lately, um, and they're all kind of like the same vibe. Um, just like feel good music, uh, upbeat. Um, and it's, it's good stuff. Uh, I recommend all three of them. Favorite songs though. Oh man. I've kind of just been diving into all of them just to see, let's see here. Let me check what I got lined up here. I know Quinn's got the, uh, he's got some older stuff that I like. Nothing that's like really came out recently. He's on tour right now. Actually, I was supposed to see him in Chicago, uh, when I was home, but I, I ended up, I, w I wasn't able to do it, but I was kind of bummed about that. Um, this son, uh, another guy, Miguel. Oh, I dude, I, yeah. Miguel is, in my opinion, in terms of this generation, probably one of the most underrated singers in songwriting. Yeah. I mean, him as an artist. To me, he's kind of like the closest thing, or if not one of the closer things we have to Prince in this generation. Yeah. With him and the way he expresses himself and whatnot. What's your favorite Miguel song? I just have to ask. Uh, it's called Sunbathe. Sunbathe. Oh, dude, that's the one he just did with Taney, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, bro, <laughs> that's the... Sun, da, da. Oh, yes, sir, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, yeah. I love that song. Um, yeah, that you, know, uh, you know his earlier stuff, like Adorn and uh, yep. Where's the Fun in Forever? Those songs, to me, are timeless. Yeah, he's good, man. He's really good. Um... The Noah Kahanga, he's got a song called Hurt Somebody. Hurt that's, Somebody. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one by him. Um, he's got a couple ones that I've been on lately. Um, but, yeah, those, those guys, though, those three, those three artists, I'd say, are just – I've listened to, like, everything of theirs, just trying to dive in deeper and find, like, some more stuff that I haven't even heard of theirs, and I'm a pretty big fan. So I've been listening to Quinn just like on shuffle and just like finding some new ones that I'm like, Oh wow, this guy's, this guy's talent. When I was, when I was obviously, uh, when I was starting to get into music when I was younger, right. Um, it never occurred to me, you know, you, you look up to certain artists, right. But right. it's so funny. I feel like our, our generation's attention span has kind of gone down in a sense. I mean, my dad was talking about listening to 50 minute albums all the time. Right. And being like, <laughs> we used to, we used to not be able to skip tracks. Like we had to digest that, that project. Right. So I'm like, dang, you know, I'm going to pride myself on if I really like an artist, I'm going to hear every song that they have to offer. Yeah, I <laughs> so like it's, that. It's kind of like I've never looked back, never looked back. Right. So like looking back at Miguel, yeah. like I've listened to every Miguel song since All I Want Is You came out. And oh, wow. you know what's funny? Well, probably not every single Miguel song because he's got yeah. so many unreleased tracks that he's just been dropping. And there's so much to absorb from yeah. all these artists. But that's the beauty of music, man is um, right. when you're For creative real. like that, you always find ways to express yourself. And yeah. um, there's never a shortage of it. And I think that's a big thing with artists and even athletes as well. I feel like with your game, when I watch you guys, I mean, I feel like when you're on the court, you discover new things about yourself that you never really thought you had. 
and it's in the spur of the moment i'm sure yeah no definitely and it's like it's like you said like and the more you like get bigger in the basketball world like people are like kind of knowing who i am now you know like now they're like learning more and more about me you know Straight so like, up they I, are <laughs> I would yeah so it's kind of like a music it's kind of like a music artist to where like you find more songs like that he had like beforehand so like it's kind of like you know people are learning more about my game and knowing like that everybody thinks i could just shoot but like no if you really look back like i'm kind of athletic i can kind of do some more things so like it kind of like correlates like that. So that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good comparison you just made there for sure. Um, let's talk about your NBA journey so far. And um, you know, what's one word that you would describe up to this point has been almost the theme of your career? Counted out. Like, I feel like I've always been kind of like forgotten about, like counted out, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I feel like a lot of guys say that, but. Um, if that's your truth, man, speak it. I mean. Yeah. Like you're, you're proving them wrong if you were ever counted out, yeah. I'm telling you that. Yeah, yeah, that's my thing. It's just like, I don't know, my journey, like, you know, I, I was Division Two player and then, like, went Division I. Um, and it's just like I'm in the NBA now. Like, nobody would have ever thought that, you know? So it's like it's kind of cool to be here. And then once I got to the NBA, I tore my ACL. So, like, it was like, oh, is he done? Is he going to make it? Yeah, a lot of people don't even know that either. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so were, yeah. You, were you on a team at the point? I was, yeah. Uh, my first year, I was on a two-way with the Bulls in Chicago, um, and I played I did, a couple. I didn't know this. I didn't know this. Yes. Yeah, I played a couple G League games, and then like right around Christmas, I tore my ACL in a G League game. Dang. And then, yeah, last year was like my first like full year in the NBA. Basically. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, it's just like it's kind of it puts it's just it cool to like just keep like yeah exactly just yeah like you're kind of like on the outskirts of it yeah. Holy, my mind is just blown right now. <laughs> it's a grind, man, for sure. Our, my respect for you is already up here. It's probably like taller than Shaq now. Um, <laughs> that's pretty, that's insane. So, so now you're you signed this deal. Um, you're a part of the squad. What what's a word now that you think is going to continue being your theme for your career now? Like surprise, I think I'm gonna surprise a lot of people. Surprise. Honestly, but, um, dude, I love that. You know, that's that's yeah. been my word. That's been my yeah. word. My music career I like so far. Surprise. Yeah, right. It's just like kind of like every step of the way, people are just like, "Who is this? Like, who who is this guy? Like, what? Where where did he come from? You know?" So it's just like it's a lot like how Duncan's story. Like people didn't know who he was, and now he's like, boom, ninety million dollars. You know, like it's just crazy. <laughs> like who would have thought? Uh, you look, you look at Duncan too, and you know he stays so humble about it as well. And um, you, you know it's 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 great to see. We ended up visiting in Boston. And I was like, this guy is just so down to earth. For and, sure, um, yeah, that's what know, I that, love about. That's what I strive to be like. But I love that word surprise. Um, yeah, yeah, like even with even with my projects, going back to my first EP that I dropped, that was that Eva Ram was actually playing in the weight room. Uh, yeah. Shortstop. Dang, like. Here I am. I'm this, I'm this short Italian kid. That's why I got the name Shortstop. It's either going to yeah. be short stuff or short stop. The short stuff just sounded really weird. <laughs> so I was like, where do you go with short stop? So that to me, like kind of being like the underdog using your, yes. using your term, it was like, you know, I always felt like I had come up second best a lot in life, right? And right. You know, making that project, um, I was very influenced a lot by 80s funk and soul and New Jack Swing music at the time. So I was like, I want to channel that influence and, you know, lo and behold, surprise people because, yes. you know, people would not expect that. And um, yeah. now moving forward and working on my second and third projects that hopefully will be coming out um, later this year, early next. Um, Perfect. I'm going to New surprise music. Really Wait, I'm excited. <laughs> New music. So I'm excited. No. And um, I love that commonality between us. Yeah. Yeah. Surprise you got to, by the way, I just want to let you know your dad's your biggest fan. I don't know where I'd be without my pops. You know, he's my role yeah. model. And uh, talk about somebody that works hard. And oh. grinds. He, uh, he's the epitome of that. Um, Literally. Yeah. Actually, this is a perfect segue into my next question and next point. So talking about your athleticism, man. So I go on Instagram, right? And I see <laughs> the video of you guys doing the scrimmage. And out of the, the right-hand corner of the video, you see my pops like, sprinting to like white yeah. sweat. I was like, hey, so Vinny made the cameo. I like that. But let's talk about this it what do they call it? Fast breaks, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fast break. I don't think I've ever they seen you get out of the way there quick. I don't think I've ever seen a dude like you do a fast break like that, man. I was like, he just straight up just. I think was it Duncan that was guarding you? I was, yeah. like, I was yeah. like, dude, I, I feel Duncan right now. So here I am. <laughs> yeah, no, Lord knows everybody that's watching this. Yeah, no, this this dude in the NBA, like I would literally be there for parlor tricks. I don't know if you see my story with my my dumb half. Yeah, right? Parlor you. tricks, man. Parlor tricks. So. I, if I was if I was dunking in that situation, if Max is running to me like that, I'd be like, "Hey, dude, you, you want to get that highlight real, real quick?" Yeah. Like, hey, Max, <laughs> no, like, please be my guest. What what's that feeling like when you're on a fast break? Yeah, you're about I mean, to you really just that. yeah, you just hope you don't miss, really. But <laughs> Duncan was actually scaring me. Uh, he was chasing me down pretty hard. I was like, "Oh man, is he gonna jump with me? Like this could get, <laughs> this, this could get dangerous." But he eventually ran out of the way. So. Um, like, but you know, yeah, I mean, you just you're just going. You want to, yeah. In a game, though, you're just like you want to pump the crowd up, like dunks get people going, it gets the team going. So. I, I read in a in Kobe's book, The Mama Mentality. He said there is nothing more demoralizing to an opposing team when you can just posterize. Literally, yeah, yeah, hey, definitely. You know, you know, one of your finest highlight moments, bringing that up, is uh, what you did to John Wall in Houston that game, <laughs> dude. Like that was when. That was when I got to know who you were. I was like, yeah. you know, I had seen you in the preseason and you were hitting like these Steph Curry threes. And I was like, dude, who is this guy? And I was texting my dad during the game. I was like, yo, who, who is this guy? Like, yeah. This guy's ridiculous. And then <laughs> I'm watching that Houston game and I just, I, I turned it on, I think at the right moment. It was like two minutes before you just, I see John Wall trying to jump up on this dude. Yeah. And then I just see him dunk on this guy and it was it was just a mesmerizing moment so you know what was going on in your head at that point you know because you were playing a lot in that game you must have had what like you had like 25 26 points that game do you remember uh it was something i think it was like 21 or 22 yeah it was something like that that's yeah. fire man hey that's yeah. fire but right was is it like in that mindset it's like oh that's john wall like i'm about to posterize it like what, what was yeah going i'm on? yeah <laughs> You don't really think about it, like, when you're doing it. But, like, after I did it, I was like, oh, that was actually – I just dunked on John Wall. Like, but it's like like we talked about earlier, like, uh, it's just surprising people again. Like, I feel like that was my, like, first game last year where, like, I kind of burst on the scene and, like, people, like, were like, oh, who was this kid? Like, I kind of surprised some people there. So, um, that was kind of, like, my game last year where I kind of just came onto the scene and um, – kind of just felt like at home and, and people started to realize that I could play at this level. And I look at it this way too. Um, you know, this year is going to be, I think, a very pivotal one for you. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, I mean, I'm, that's the way I'm looking at it. So I'd like uh, to think I'm a very intuitive person and that's what it's telling me. Yeah, I, I like it. I like to hear that stuff. So yep, the only uh, way is up. Yeah, I mean, I could, I'll just control what I control. Uh, I'm, I'm going to work hard and, and be in the gym and uh, whatever opportunities I get, I'm going to take advantage of. So uh, I think we got a really good team, though, this year. So it's going to be a lot of fun for sure. We got some characters. That's how I look yeah. at it. <laughs> yeah, we got, we got some characters on this team. Um, I was texting. I was texting with Vic, and I was like, dude, y'all are going to be like the Bad Boy Pistons from like <laughs> 8, 9, 90, man. It's going to be crazy. Like those, right. vibes, those vibes are coming back. You know, everything old is new again, right? So yeah. why not? We're, we might. You might lead the NBA in technical fouls. <laughs> <laughs> like, definitely going to lead the NBA in screaming matches. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Beautiful thing, though. Beautiful thing. We love passion, right? Exactly. That's the heat culture. <laughs> yes, indeed. The Lord knows. if, Dude, if I was on that team, I would literally be like, here you are. You got, like, short me, like, short Italian, dude. Every team needs a Joe Pesci, right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about some key mentors in your life. I would just love to hear, because you've had such a journey. I mean, like you said, going from D2 to then playing at DePaul, right? Yeah, yeah. You're a big part of um, that campus culture, for sure. Um, I see on your stories when you go back, um, you yeah. know, it's always a warm welcome. It's pretty cool. Um, also, like, the, sh the city of Chicago, which you have beautifully painted behind <laughs> you. Um, you know, what does the city mean to you? That's home. Uh, I mean, it'll always be home. I, I've lived there my whole life until last year, basically. So um, all of my family's there. I love, I love Chicago to death. So 
Um, but to me, like my family is everything. So uh, my parents mean the world to me and my brother and my sister, um, you know, my brother's got two kids, like I said earlier, but I just, I just love being around them. I love being home with them, uh, spend as much time as I can with them. So uh, they've kind of been my, my inspiration through it all and um, have really guided me along this whole journey and just I couldn't ask for better people to, to, to go along with it and to be there supporting me. I feel like a lot of times we can take the support of our families for granted in a lot of yeah, ways. Um, and it's only when you like pause for a second, you're just like, wow, they, they've been with me through all the ups and downs. I look at it like with my mom and dad, I'm an only child, right? So, yeah. but to see like the vehicles that they had given me in order to get better at my craft as well, just like you with basketball, um, those, are, those are things I'm going to cherish. And I'm sure like what you're doing, um, we'll pay our parents and family back in full for all the support exactly. they've given us. Exactly. Yeah. It's just like, as you grow older, you like start to realize like all those basketball camps or all those basketball teams you played for, or like you like, like musical lessons or singing lessons, like those things aren't cheap. So like, you gotta, like, you think about it, like looking, looking at it now, it's like when you're younger, you don't even realize how much they're spending on you or what they're doing for you. But you know, looking back at it as you get older, it's just like you want to thank them for everything that they've done because you don't know one thing that they paid for could have bumped you over the edge to get you where you are today. So um, you That's always want to well put that that only I think that fuels um, almost it makes it a necessity. It's like, wow, like, yeah, I owe them so much. And I don't know. My dad always says, hey, don't you know, the only thing you're going to repay me back in is just I, I see joy like seeing you succeed. And yeah. uh, you know, that's, that's like unconditional love right there. First, yeah, 1,000%. Yeah. Yeah, and like, I'm sure it's the same thing with your family. Like, they see you having fun. They see you balling out. That's yeah. putting a smile on their faces in so many ways. Yeah, they're just so happy. Yeah, they're just really happy for me and where I am. And They want not. They ask for nothing. They want nothing in return, but, um, which is just unbelievable in that, in the, for their aspects. But they just want to come and see me and, and, and see me play, so. Um, you know, I always got an open bedroom for in my place, so they, they're welcome. <laughs> I love that. So, fun facts. You got any fun facts that you would love anybody watching this to know about you? Fun what's facts? That, what's something unassuming that you think even I would be like, whoa, what? I don't know if I got anything. I'm a pretty boring dude, to be honest with you. I'm pretty plain. That is a uh, – well, I saw this meme. What was it? <laughs> um, it was – this. It's the, it's the duck, and it's going, see – a P that's cap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure like, as soon as I move on, I'll just be like, Oh, I could have said that, but uh, here, I got, here I got one. So I, I've been really interested in why players choose their numbers. Um, oh, there you go. So, and it was funny, like PJ, PJ and why he chose 17 and how he was talking about, he yeah, only played 17 games my rookie year. That that's like a reminder for me. That's why we're 17. Like you would have yeah. never known that. Um, right. So why 31? See, this is a, another boring story. I honestly, there's nothing to it. Like I got to college uh, at my division two school my first year. And that was like, the, I was the only freshman. So like, that was the only number that was left. It was like a small school. Like we didn't have, like you didn't get to really pick. It was like whatever they had left, like you just took. So like 31 was the only one that was left. So I kind of wore it. I had a good year and then I just kept wearing it ever since. See, that's so cool. I, are you are you superstitious like that where it's like yeah oh yeah, yeah. like this number brought me a lot of good so I'm yeah is going and honestly like i am kind of superstitious because when i tore my acl like i was wearing number 20 i was wearing a different number so like what number were you wearing i was wearing 28 which is my uh -oh. my birthday was march 28 so like that's why i wore it um because gotcha. somebody else on the team was wearing 31 so it just it just happened, and I now I like I'll never wear that again because it's just like it feels like it's like a bad karma thing. And was that in Chicago or? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, that's crazy. No, thirty one, thirty one. Yes, sir. Yeah, we got to keep it there. Here's here's a fun one. So I'll never forget. This was like I feel like one of our first interactions and in how we ended up becoming acquainted with one another was when I did um, the NBL NBL episode. Excuse me with Bam. Yeah, uh, when the heat had shared that, dude, I was getting so many uh, comments. I think I have them pulled up. Let me see if I can find them. These are hilarious. They, <laughs> they mistook me for you. 
that was basically what I'm getting at. Here's one. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Thought this was Max Struess. And then uh, this one guy was like, hey, that's Struess. You can't fool us. Oh, and then this man. guy's like, why is Max Struess interviewing Bam? <laughs> 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 so uh, when this drops, fun. I'm doing an Instagram poll. And I'm going to be like, are we each other's doppelgangers? <laughs> yeah, we're interviewing each other. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Man. Dude, that's that's funny. Well, Max, dude, I appreciate you hopping on this episode so much, man. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your insight. Um, this has been such a great episode, man. Of course, brother. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. This is cool. It's cool oh, stuff. You're all doing. love, man. All love. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, man. This is Music Basketball and Life. So that's my interview with Max Struess, everybody. Uh, be sure to comment if you think that we look alike or we could be brothers. Please do that. Um, we need to settle that debate ASAP. <laughs>